What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got a special one for you guys. We're gonna go through my top three favorite lures for lake trout. We're gonna start off with number three. That's gonna be a small little swim bait, just like this, all right? You can get them pre-rigged, you can get them with underspins. Um, you can kind of rig them however you want, but swim baits are a super versatile bait. This one in particular, I really like. It's got the sartreuse tail, which I'm a huge fan of that color, but it's also got perch bars. See those green kind of perch bars and trout? Love to eat perch. It's probably one of their favorite forages. You've got Cisco's and then you've got perch. So today we're gonna go through my top three favorites. We're gonna start with number three, work our way up to number one and take you guys along the way. We've got the Mega Live fired up here. I've got a Cisco on a dead rod or a dead stick um, behind us, suspended in the water column. You guys will be able to see that mark on the Mega Live here. And I didn't include that in the top three because I want to talk about lures. Um, Cisco's dead bait is, are all super good baits for trout. Um, but we're basically gonna be talking about lures today. I wanna to focus on lures. So we've got the Cisco out. That'll be kind of our testimonial to see how well these lures are working compared to a dead bait. And we're gonna see if we can put three trout in the ice with three different baits. Here you go guys, here's a mark coming up. Ooh, he's dropping down. Not really loving it. Just going back. He's coming. Oh, I got his interest. Just got to keep it now, unless he's going to go over to there. And now he's going over to the Cisco. Oh, he's coming back to us. He's kind of fading off. So he had some interest, not a bunch. Trying to do some big strokes here, trying to get him back, but he's gone right now. And it's it's interesting because he didn't go look at the Cisco. What I've noticed a lot of times with these trout is you look at your bait, and if you've got a Cisco nearby, a lot of times they go and check that out. So that one's probably just not that active, but also it could be they want something a little bit different out of our lure. Like I said, swim baits are really versatile, so I might rig up one with like an underspin on it. <laughs> That can add some flash and vibration to it. Um, but these tail, like boot tails on these swim baits do throw off a, a good amount of vibration. You can feel it on the lift, almost like a blade, not quite as much as a blade bait, but almost like a blade bait. Um, you're making definitely, you're moving some water and they can definitely feel that. But that was cool. That it was only about 10 minutes in here to our first spot. Got a little bit of a reaction out of one and we might just need to fine tune exactly what they want today. Oh, here we go, guys. I'm just retying. We got a fish looking right at the Cisco. He's looking right at it. If I can get retied here and get my bait done quick. Now he's swimming under the hole, but I'm not even down there yet. So that fish is gone as of right now, but he should be able to see this bait falling. I just tied on that underspin. this a shot. Oh, there he is. I can see him again. He's just back from the Cisco. So he's on that side of that Cisco right now. So right underneath it, he's going right past the Cisco and he's coming to us right now. Look at this right here. See, we'll chase it down. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. Can't make up his mind which one he wants. Here we go, we got one right on the Cisco. Right on it. He's leaving it. Oh, so close. Oh, there's two fish. Now that they're both, there's a new one coming up to the Cisco, and then the one that just chased us. There's two trout right now looking at our Cisco, right there. 
One just started off. There goes the other one. Come on, come back. That one was so close to biting it. He chased so hard. Here we go. Oh, just freaking missed him. I just missed him. Here comes his buddy. He's got him. Yeah, baby. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. He hit it on the fall. On the underspin, guys. We just made the adjustment. Now look, that other one is still sitting looking at that Cisco. If we double right now, I'm going to be so screwed. That was freaking awesome. So we saw how they, how their attitude was on that first swim bait that we tried, the Wild Eye Shad. I made a small adjustment. I didn't really change the profile of the bait, but I changed the size or the color. And then I also changed that now this underspin's got a blade on it. You guys can see this fish. Actually, it's like right underneath my sled. You can see me fighting them. Oh, I think it's a good one. That's so cool how they come in in pairs. With this Mega Live, I've been noticing that in the couple, well, week or two that I've been fishing with it. So now it looks like there's actually, so he probably just burped. You're seeing all the air bubbles come up. So that's definitely, he just burped, but his buddy right here is right underneath him. And now he's going over to the Cisco as we're fighting this fish. Now there's a third one. Look at that third one. We've got three trout here right now. Let's see if we can get this guy up. I think this is going to be a pretty good one. That first initial run was awesome. He's wrapped up right now. He's still looking at the Cisco. This is so cool. Oh, almost looks like I missed it. Or he missed it almost. Might have him kind of in the side. That's what when they hit it on the fall like that. It can be hard to uh, get a good hook in them. Unless he's just wrapped up, but it almost looked like I had him like in the front pack in with the hook. Oh yeah, I missed him. Or he missed the lure, I should say. I don't even know if I'm able to get him up the hole. Come on! So he missed it. I got him in the side, unfortunately. Not obviously intentionally, but that was so cool. There was literally a school of them. There we go. Boom. Buddy, you aren't supposed to get it there. But there's our underspin right there, guys. The little Largo shad. Boom. There's our first Laker of the day. Bait number one checked off the list in about 20 minutes. So cool, see that school of fish come in? Obviously I didn't try and snag him, he just missed it while it was falling. So cool, so, so cool. Let's get it back. There he goes. Woo! All right, so I'll give you guys a little bit closer look at this thing. Just a small underspin. Now a lot of guys use these in bass fishing, right? Swim bait. You got your blade underneath here. It's got a really nice action in the fall. So we've got a three inch Storm Largo Shad and just a shad color, kind of a blue black pearl body. I think this is a half ounce head. And I kind of went with a shorter swim bait because a lot of times these fish want to nip at the back of the bait. So I want that hook shank to be back really far. And that's the nice thing about this jig head is it has a long shank. Okay, that's why I bought this one. Um, so it gets that hook towards the back of the lure. But there it is guys, number one. Checked off the list, we're gonna go get number two out of the rod box. Number two is gonna go to Rapala Jig and Wrap. This is a number seven, Sartreuse White Glow. Absolutely love this bait for trout. There is one modification I make to it. I take off the bottom hook and I replace it with a larger gap and a little bit stronger hook. This is a VMC hybrid treble we put on the bottom here. So you can easily just bend this wire out with the pliers or splitting pliers take the smaller hook off, and then for the trout, I replace it with the larger shank hook. And the nice part about the hybrid trebles is they've got that EWG, that extra wide gap, so you got a lot of space in there, and then they're also short shank. So it keeps the bait kind of small and compact versus the normal shank hook. The bottom of your hook would be down here. So nice, small profile. You're not changing the profile too much by the adding the different hook, but you're upping your hooking percentage huge, and you've got a lot stronger hook for lake trout that obviously pull very hard and could straighten out a hook. So. We're gonna stay right here. 
dropped on our number seven. Number nines are also good as well. Um, here we go. We got a trout right on. Oh, here he comes over to me. We got a trout right on the Cisco right now. He was by me. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Got him. Oh yes, yes. We are just working this school of trout right now. You guys saw that all happen in real time. I just went and got this bait out of the rod case. Oh yes. <laughs> so, like I said, I carry three rods with me. They're all exactly the same rod. These are 45 inch Thorn Brothers Custom Pro Graphites. And then a 4,000 Daiwa Tatula spinning reel. Here we go, I got this one in the mouth. Got him. And if you guys look, we got him on that treble hook, okay? That extra treble hook we just added on. He doesn't have the nose hook. He doesn't have the tail hook. He's just got the treble. He's got one point really good. And then the other one he's got right there, but right in the corner of the mouth. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have asked for that to go any better. That was insane. All right, we got one out and these freaking these hybrid trebles are just so sticky. There we go. There we go. There we go, guys. Fish number two on my second favorite trout bait, number seven jig and wrap. Absolutely love it. So cool. Pretty fins on this guy. Cool greenish blue colors. Get him back. There he goes. <laughs> Boom, baby. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. You couldn't ask for that to work out any better. There was a fish in the area right away, staring at the Cisco and then came flying over and ate the artificial. So goes to show it's not, I mean, a lot of people fish dead bait for trout and it's good too. I mean, if you can use your secondary line, it's gonna get you a couple extra bites. And the biggest thing I think it does is it just keeps fish around in your area. I mean, who knows if that fish would have been here without that Cisco being there. That Cisco kind of had that fish's attention, kept him in the area and literally gave me time to walk over, change rods, come back, and there was a fish sitting here basically waiting for me 20 feet away. Dropped the bait down, he flew over to it. Whack, awesome. All right guys, number one, should be no surprise to anybody. White tube, in my opinion, I like the Sartreuse in white. Um, I make these myself, or I paint them myself, I should say. I get them as a white tube, and then I take some plastics paint, and uh, I paint the head, and I paint the tails. Um, but that is probably, I mean, anybody's go-to trout bait is a tube. This is a three and three quarter inch, I believe. Um, and then this is a half ounce drop tine tackle jig head. And then it's got, I like Thatcher's jig heads because they come with this trailer built in. And then uh, on the back, I do switch out the hook in the back and do another one of those VMC hybrid trebles in the back. But that stinger going back, gets a lot of those short bites because a lot of these trout want to come up and just grab the tails. So that, that trailer hook is back nice and far. This, chew, this tube's been chewed up pretty good already this year. Um, but you can see how far back those tentacles go and then you've got the trailer just behind it, so. And we've got our 45 inch. Horn Brothers Custom Predator. Pull that line over top of our hook. Drop this thing down. And now watch, the first number, baits numbers three and two were uh, pretty easy. Now watch number one be the hardest one to get bit today. Here's I'm looking at the Cisco guys. Ooh, he's kind of starting around at it. Looking at it. He's right on it. Like right on it. Here comes the tube. Got him. Yes. Yes, we are three minutes before the peak of our major. And if you guys don't know what majors and minors are, I did a video on it with Lake Trout. I probably, I don't know, not too long ago. I'm not sure if I uploaded it yet or not by the time you guys see this one, but they are uh, basically how the moon affects these trout. That's actually, I think it's the best one of the day. Um, and it's a thing, like it, it's true with muskies, it's true, I've seen it with brown trout. 
and then lake trout as well. Oh no. Come here. Got him. <laughs> oh, I lost them, but then I got them. Here we go, guys. Number three, top three lake trout baits. There you have it. One, two, and three. We just crushed that in about an hour and a half. We got all, we got three fish, three different lures. Pretty one, nice orange fins. Just before peak. How awesome is that? All right, buddy. Send you back. <laughs> Boom, baby. There you guys have it. There's actually a fish right on the bottom right now. Man, I am so happy that couldn't have worked out better. What an amazing morning. Had a great little window here. Never moved spots. We stayed in one spot. There was consistent action. I, I wanted to move to a little bit better spot. I mean, this is just kind of a medium spot for me. I was just going to start here. And then as we got closer to the major, I was going to move to one of my better spots, but there was fish here, fish in the area. We stuck it out and we whacked three fish on three different baits. That's the funnest part, guys. I mean, you can go out and catch fish in the same bait over and over and it's cool and it's fun, but it's really cool, or what I really enjoy, I guess, out of it is catching them on different lures, seeing how they react to things, using your electronics with the Mega Live, seeing how they react to a Cisco versus, you know, an artificial lure. All three fish bit the artificial, but I think almost all the ones that we caught went and looked at the Cisco. All right, guys, well, I think the biggest takeaway from today, we now complete our challenge. Between all these three of these baits, I think the biggest key and things that people don't really think about is they all do something on the fall. They all have some kind of action while they're falling. Obviously our swim bait here, you've got the underspin that's gonna be spinning when you're dropping it and also you're gonna get the action out of this tail. That's gonna be kicking as it falls. With your jigging wraps here with the big tail, if you watch this thing fall, it does these big circles, kind of that wounded bait fish, kind of dying free fall. And then same thing with the tube as well. It's got that free fall kind of that dying action as it falls. And that's really important for trout fishing because they love to chase these baits on the way down, as you guys saw. I'd say 30% of your bites come on the fall when you're just letting your bait go down to the bottom. And then also when you're bringing it up. So having an action while it's falling is very, very important. You can kind of change that fish's attitude, get him charged up again while he's chasing that thing down. That bait's doing something. It's just not falling in a straight line, okay? That's what makes these three baits unique and really special. You know, I think they're the three best baits for trout fishing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already, please consider subscribing below. We've got a bunch of cool content here, lake trout stuff, walleye stuff, musky stuff, smallmouth stuff. I'm planning on doing more filming than ever this coming season. Uh, being a full-time guide, I'm on the water every day in the summer, spring, summer, fall. So plan to do a bunch, teach you guys a bunch, and hopefully we'll see you guys there.